Good afternoon. Uh, my aim here is to uh, offer some insights into um, personalization technology and its application in consumer health uh, from a business uh, perspective. So you can think of me more as the marketing type than the phenotype. Um, I want to draw on our experience in Biancomed, show you what we're doing in personalization as it affects, as it, um, in, in our particular area, which is around sleep diagnosis. So I'll be speaking about that. But also I'm drawing a little bit on my own experience because in a previous life I um, introduced the concept of online, uh, online personal dieting to Ireland and the UK and with a company called eDiets. In fact, Eileen spent a few months there many years ago. And uh, that was a very basic form of personalization um, using profiling. <clears throat> so I'm drawing on that, on that experience as well. So just in a few minutes about Biancomed. Biancomed, as Mike said, is a spin out from UCD Engineering, literally 20 yards from this very building. And uh, the engineers there uh, came up with a very unique uh, technology around wire-free um, well, wire technology that measures sleep and breathing without, without any contact on, on the body using radio frequency waves. Um, in essence, what this technology is doing is creating a personalized sleep diagnostic report uh, using a bio uh, using a biosensor and I think there are some parallels in our development uh, for the nutrition space. Uh, we are a classic spin out from the university. Uh, the university transferred the IP over to uh, the company. We're VC backed and at this stage uh, since 2003 we've built up a significant staff and uh, new investors and we've been pursuing a regulatory path, um, FDA, et cetera. Um, our strategy is actually to integrate the technology into other technologies. So we're not necessarily an end-to-end -end solution, but um, a, more an integration player. So just a little bit about our core technology. So what we have is this box that sits beside, beside the bed, points towards the patient or the user, and captures uh, their, basically their chest movements using radio frequency. Uh, we have built proprietary algorithms that separate the movement into breathing and heartbeat, and we create this personalized uh, sleep and respiration report. This just gives you an idea of the uh, technology at play here. So you can see uh, we separate out the algorithm using the algorithms between respiration and movement. From that, we do signal processing. We develop a hypnogram, and we capture apnea events, and from that, we, we create a sleep report. This sleep report basically shows, is it, Think of it as an objective report of someone's uh, sleep. Um, sleep is notoriously difficult to report. Everybody has a, feels like, you know, I had a, bad, I had a bad night's sleep, I had a good night's sleep. But when you have a device that actually objectively reports this, this creates interesting uh, behavioral, um, has, an, has an interesting behavioral impact. So what are the things we're measuring? Things like sleep duration, sleep efficiency, latency, uh, wake after sleep onset, uh, and in fact sleep apnea without any contact on the body. Before I go into personalization in more detail, just I thought I would just overlap the nutrition theme a little bit. So there's a couple of interesting um, links between lack of sleep and obesity, which some of you may or may not know. Uh, so there's, for example, this is an interesting test done with a, a cohort of nurses. And as you can see here, uh, the basic conclusions were that uh, short people who have short-term sleep and sleep, uh, uh, sorry, people who have short episodes of sleep uh, have a risk, a higher risk of long-term weight gain. Uh, so you think of these poor nurses, they're probably the hardest workers and they're, getting, they're, getting, they're suffering the most uh, uh, weight problems. So you can see those with five hours of, of a higher weight gain and in fact that gain seems to accelerate over time. This is a study showing just the, the fact that <coughs> population today are actually sleeping a lot less than they used to. Uh, over from say 1955 up to the present date, we've gone from sort of an average of 8.5 hours to more like six hours per night. Interesting study around uh, childhood obesity, lack of sleep was a bigger risk factor for overweight and obesity in the study than any other known contributor. And in relation to, uh, again, short sleep duration associated with reduced leptin and elevated ghrelin and increased body, um, body mass index, there's an impact on protein. So, back to the theme of personalization. So, what we have here is um, just a definition of what are we really talking about in terms of the marketing and the business side of personalization. And it's very broad, it's, it's a, using technology to modify a service 
uh, based on the information about the user. And just as Heist was talking about earlier, I mean, Philips clearly are leaders in this space using biosensors and various other things. Essentially, the idea is to give feedback, real-time feedback like we're doing with sleep that will impact on, on behavior. So we're, how is it applied in the more general consumer health space? Um, this is a, uh, what we call a virtuous sort of circle here between the three main health areas of diet, uh, fitness, and uh, sleep. Uh, Dr. William DeMant in Stanford came up with this. Um, the interesting thing here, as um, Heiss was saying, obviously fitness is relatively easy to monitor uh, using sensors like Philips have, and there are many other pedometers, Nike Plus, etc. Uh, Garmin. I mean, that, that industry is really maturing quite, quite well, and it's uh, not sure about too many studies on it, but one study I'll talk about later. Uh, but it's a very, you know, shall we say, efficacious area. People are very engaged with their devices, their mobile phones, their pedometers, etc. And physical activity is definitely, um, arguably, is benefiting from that. Uh, weight loss and diet is a more complex picture because we're not, as I said earlier, we're not at a point where we can actually assess actual food intake and calorie calorie intake. So what you have are a series of maybe web, web programs, etc., which are effectively profile based and giving a personalized nutrition plan to people based on uh, fairly basic database uh, filtering. On sleep, you're more likely to get, actually get involved with the sensor space because uh, sensors and sleep make sense. You can't actually, you can't obviously audit your own sleep. Um, buying committed clearly playing in that space. There's a number of new players coming through. Some of you might have the, the iPhone application Sleep Cycle. Anybody, has anybody heard of that? It's quite a, quite a popular download. Um, so sensors make, sensors make a lot of sense in that, in that area. So wh what can personalized technology actually do? Effectively, initially at, a very, at its very basic level, it's capturing, monitoring, and tracking. So uh, this is well, this is where you have where you have actual devices, uh, devices um, capturing the information. Um, one of the benefits here is counteract self-reporting, obviously. So you either did the run or you didn't do the run. You either slept well or you didn't sleep well. Uh, it increases access to information heretofore impossible to get. I mean, without buying Comet and other devices, people really have no idea about their sleep quality, no idea about their apnea, no idea whether they're insomnia, etc. Increases knowledge about the various uh, conditions. Um, boosting engagement is very important for behavior change. So the question here, the challenge here is, do devices actually increase engagement in relation to people dealing with their conditions? Uh, I think there's a good, I think there's more studies to be done there, but I think we're getting to the point where it's getting, we're being able to prove that engagement increases with, uh, with technology. Um, I'll speak a little bit more about incentives and social media and these other trends later. In relation to actual efficacy, so um, we were, there's a couple of studies out there that are, are, are quite interesting that I'm aware of. One is a study I was involved in in Unilever concerning uh, a technology very similar to Philips where we gave people, uh, employees um, a device and a weighing scale with an internet connection and no human interaction. We just gave them, uh, there was an artificial intelligence program which gave them, feed, gave them feedback on their activity and on their um, weight. And over a period of uh, 10 weeks, we saw significant drop in blood pressure, mm -hmm. increased physical activity and uh, weight, weight reduction. So very positive, positive uh, impact from technology, pure technology, no phone calls, nothing. Uh, that was a, uh, a white paper on that. I can give, give people a link to that if they wish to get it. And there's a study around in, insomnia that's also quite interesting. If you give people a self-reporting mechanism, uh, insomnia is notoriously actually under-report the amount of sleep that they get. They, they always think, they, oh, I only had two hours sleep. I, I never sleep. I sleep really badly. When you give them a, um, a device and tells them you actually slept four or five hours, it has a placebo effect. So this is very quickly how it applies to Biancomed around um, the same kind of, we, obviously we capture information, we increase knowledge around sleep, we, we, we believe we're, we're in part of that engagement process and uh, in part of the efficacy process. So what are the more general uh, trends in the personalization technology space? So this is more of a personal view. I think uh, devices and the, you know, we've gone from the web. I was part of introducing the web. It's a very, fairly basic uh, concept. Um, 
We, um, I think devices are definitely going to come to play. I think Heist is on the right track. Uh, they need to be scalable. Um, I think there's a, a trend around outsourcing. Uh, governments are looking at cutting costs all the time, telemedicine, etc. So moving devices to the home, getting people to own their, uh, their condition. Uh, we've already spoken about genomics, genetics, etc. Uh, the chronic conditions, again, biofeedback, where can the devices fit in there? Social media incentives and gaming. There's beginning to be some interesting um, research around how can you actually use incentives to get people to p change their behavior. And of course, uh, mobility, interoperability, the mobile phone, of course, is critical. Interoperability, people like Continue Alliance, building protocols so that devices speak to each other. Uh, so you don't just have this proliferation of devices, but they actually do integrate blood pressure monitors that are Bluetooth, uh, you know, on the same Bluetooth protocol as your weighing scales, which is the same as your pedometer, which is the same as your sleep. Uh, so, you know, this is the kind of new world that we're moving into. So just a picture, a glimpse about the future. Just before I go to this, there's a quick question about um, how uh, uh, personalization technology is working in the retail space, Mike mentioned earlier. So just a quick show of hands, how many people use Google as a, as a web destination, just roughly? How many people use iGoogle? Keep your hand up if you use iGoogle, which is the personalized Google page. That's maybe 30%. So um, just to give you an explanation there, so basically, if you're just using Google, there's no real personalization. If you're using iGoogle, you're taking, you're taking the initiative to prof you're basically telling Google, actually, who, who you really are. Then, of course, if you search, for example, cars, what's happening there is the car ads start coming on your Google page. That's behavior-based personalization. So Google are obviously smart enough, we know that, to send you ads on cars. Uh, how many people use Amazon to buy books? Okay. Uh, how many people use the the um, people people like us, um, um, people like me, algorithm on Amazon? Notice when you buy something, it says other people like you bought this book. How many people use that? And click on. So again, that's that's a another form of personalization where they're actually that's a collaborative filtering personalization because they're actually looking at all people out there and saying, oh, okay. Uh, the, obviously, these people. This is a clever way of clever way of, uh, of selling. Uh, in relation to, uh, so that's more the, more the, the, some of the background retail concepts that I think are coming to consumer health, uh, consumer uh, directed health. Uh, those kind of algorithms are definitely coming, uh, or even at play as we speak. Um, so in relation to what the future might look like, so obviously we've mentioned devices and monitoring. So really at the center you have these conditions, weight, stress, sleep, hypertension, etc., uh, diabetes. You're going to have devices that are speaking to these. Uh, coaches and dynamic feedback. I think dynamic feedback is really where, where it's all going. So it's not just a clunky once-off feedback. It's going to be continuous feedback and biofeedback bio based on your actual performance in relation to the condition you have. So whether it's minute by minute, hour by hour, emails, alerts, you know, you're going to, this is, the, this is what's going to happen. The, there's, a, there's a dynamic engine going to be at play that's basically going to help you on your, on your path towards your condition. Uh, we can't leave out communities and actual people and coaches, and I think I was interested that Heist mentioned that they do have a coach, and that's an important point, because there are limitations to, the, to technology itself, um, clearly. Some of the challenges I mentioned are, you know, who pays, who's going to pay for this system? This is a big, big question. There's a lot of free information out there. Who's, who's you know, is, is the user looking for uh, this to be free, or do they want to pay for it? Uh, is the health system going to step up? The NHS, for example, have been quite progressive in the area of um, mental illness, for example. They, there's a whole CBT, cognitive behavior therapy platform that exists online, which is helping people with uh, psychiatric, uh, psychiatric issues. That's showing some very interesting results. Uh, I think we need to improve the efficacy uh, path that we're on. We need to get more studies out there. And the technology is always going to be commoditized, etc. Uh, the, the, we have a debate internally about own device versus integration. I think that's always a, a perennial debate around technology. Do you want to get your device, your technology into someone else's technology, or do you want to build, build your own? Just so, what, what, what are we? What's the market size? I was very pleased when I saw the um, the uh, seminar that you know it's a personal institution. Where's the business? Because obviously, being from the business perspective, that intrigued me. 
this is a study, or sorry, a report by, I think it was PwC had one report on this mobile health market. So it's, there isn't a lot of study out there, but, or reports out there, but essentially we're looking at an explosion in personalized mobile health. So I think we can make some sort of extrapolations from this. So mobile health being that everything's going to go to the mobile phone. And if you look at some of these, uh, you know, what are people going to be doing? They're going to, first of all, they're going to be buying certain devices that speak to their mobile phone, that's for sure, whether it's, in our case, a sleep monitor, uh, in other cases, perhaps the mo activity monitor. People do want, the phone seems to be the, the uh, utility, the, the device that people want to relate to. And uh, there will be downloads and there will be transactions on the phone. So this clearly, and they're talking about a $7 billion business by 2015. So I'm sure, sure that will please Heiss. So in summary, um, personalization is here. It's getting smarter every day. And uh, we just need to get moving. Thank you very much.